Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Cryptoware and this is the continuation of the last uh, discussion that we had on the basics of malware analysis. So let's uh, move ahead. So in the previous video, we discussed about what malware analysis is, what are some basic techniques, what are we actually following while performing malware analysis and what are we or why are we trying to do that? Now today we will move a step ahead and we'll learn about some interesting terminologies that we will be encountering a lot during our uh, analysis. Apart from that, even today, if you think that uh, the definitions are not enough, because I'll try to explain them in a very simplest way, but uh, you won't be able to understand it fully or you won't be able to visualize it unless we perform some practicals and performing while performing those practicals, uh, you will have to like while performing those practicals, you will be seeing those things. So when you see all those things and how are they happening? What is the uh, connection uh, amongst all the uh, terminologies or if we want to call it like connecting different kinds of dots, uh, the way we are trying to analyze the malware, at that point of time, it will become more clear. So we'll have more two to three videos, which will be more theoretical, and then we'll move on to the practical analysis. So let's get started. So these are some interesting terminologies that, um, that you should be aware of if you are going to start with malware analysis apart from malware analysis if you want to get into like you want to learn OSINT or if you want to learn threat hunting threat intelligence these will be very important at that point of time as well also if we if we miss any terminologies like for example while we are analyzing a malware and we come up with something new some new kind of uh, term then we will learn about it at that point of time as well so let's get started. So CNC, you must have heard about the term CNC, command and control server. So it is nothing like uh, if there is a malware attack, always a malware attack has a goal. I'm talking about a mass malware attack campaign, which is either targeted or maybe it is uh, like it just wants to steal data. They have different goals. Now, after stealing data or after disrupting a complete organization, where are they planning to, you know, move their data to or give all the details related to that particular organization to? So they have a centralized server, which is actually sending commands to the victim devices. So, for example, if your device is infected with a malware and you're unaware of it, nothing is happening at that point of time. Let us assume that it is not that kind of malware which is whose um whose effect is very visible unless of course you there are symptoms as we had discussed before in the previous session there are a few symptoms but a lot of time we ignore them because they are very common like if your system is hanging a lot you might be thinking that you're using a lot of applications so you will not be actually um thinking of it as any kind of attack at that point of time so for example if your system or any device is infected with a uh, malware then your device becomes uh, then that malware tries to connect to that centralized server which provides some commands to perform some other actions it totally depends upon the goal of the uh, malware the what they're planning to do uh, while performing that malware attack. It totally depends on that. These command and control servers are controlled by the attackers. So whenever we are performing threat hunting, threat intelligence, our intention is to figure out uh, where is the command and control server located? Like it will be having uh, an IP address. So we will try to figure out where is it located what particular devices or which IPs it is affecting, what are the rest of the victim devices. So it is like a central system. Uh, when we will be performing malware analysis, we'll get to know about such IPs also. Threat actors. Now, command and control servers are the centralized system. If we call they are just, they are like uh, centralized servers, which are, uh, 
giving commands to the uh, to those uh, malware like these are just programs so they are connecting so whenever your system or device is getting infected with a malware it is creating a connection between your victim that victim device with the uh, command and control server now who has initiated this attack so the uh, so the group or individuals who have initiated the attack we call them as threat actors so the intention behind any kind of attack is figuring out who the threat actor is have they performed such kind of attacks or any different kind of cyber attacks in the past or are they planning to do anything like that in the future how you are going to figure out that is through intelligence through different kind of research and analysis we'll learn about those things as well we'll go through different reports as well so that we can understand the mindset of an attacker of of of, of a malware author again this can be a mass campaign or a targeted attack indicators of compromise now how do you understand being an analyst malware an analyst how would you understand that your system is has been compromised or has been infected by a malware so indicators of compromise are like benchmark so that it will help you to measure if your device is infected for example we discussed about the symptoms to understand if your uh, device is infected with a malware it it is completely related to different artifacts which indicate as the term indicators it is indicating that uh indicating how and uh, how there are some unusual behavior prevailing in your device or in your organization and that may be considered as an indicators of compromise and we need to figure out what is it how is it how is it happening and later on we can come up with some kind of solution we can come up with a conclusion basically whether it was an attack or not if it was an attack then again where is the cnc server who are the threat actors these are the main questions that we try to answer through indicators of compromise apts they are advanced persistent threats a number of times what happens if your system if if the organization is infected with a malware attack the organization is unaware of it even if it is not a malware attack maybe uh, the threat actors <coughs> excuse me maybe the threat actors have somehow infected the organization through a, through their website or any other products which was vulnerable and this gradually start gaining access to their system to their organization and they keep themselves undetected so you you being in that particular organization are unaware of the fact that your organization has been infected or has been uh, attacked has been affected from a cyber attack and you are unaware of it after few days weeks months depending upon their target depending upon their goals they start con contacting the cnc server they start performing the next actions to disrupt your services to disrupt the organization so they are advanced persistent threats these threats remain persistent in your system and they remain uh, in or in your organization and they remain undetected for a very long period of time completely depending upon the goal or the target of the malware authors or maybe the threat actors now packing obviously now the attackers have become very advanced even the defenders have become very advanced so both of them have to go like uh have to abide by such kind of rules that is happening that is getting advanced each and every day nowadays so detecting a malware becomes very easy for the antiviruses or any anti malware uh, softwares unless it is a new kind of attack but a kind of attack have something in similar for example ransomware have something in common so if your anti malware software is able to detect one kind of malware of course it is not necessary but it may be able to detect other kinds of ransomware also so in that case sometimes they pack the or obfuscate what do i mean by packing or obfuscating they transform the malicious file into something that protects it from any detection 
even as a malware researcher or as a malware analyst, it becomes difficult for you to analyze that malicious file. These programs are compressed and are very hard to analyze. So that is called packing. We'll learn about packing of malware as well while performing malware analysis. So entropy of a file. This is another very interesting topic and interesting term basically. And this is uh, related to the packing or obfuscation of a malware file. So how does a software decide, def decide if that particular file has been packed? So it is totally dependent on the entropy of a file. So what is entropy? It measures the randomness of the data in a file. So if your mal uh, malicious file is not packed or has not been obfuscated, it has a similar pattern. So it has less randomness in its characters which are present. So it becomes and as a result, it becomes easy for you to analyze as well. So as the randomness is low, we can detect that the entropy of the file is low, hence it is not packed. On the other hand, if we see it a very random, like if your if there is a file which has been compressed or even while compressing or while changing it into other form, we use a number of random characters. And those random characters define how much, what the entropy of a file could be. So higher the randomness, higher is the entropy of the file. And hence, by that way, we can detect that this is, this is, a, this is a packed file or this is an obfuscated file. So that is one way how we detect. Because as a researcher, malware researcher, it is very important for you to analyze whether the file has been packed or not. Botnet. You must have heard about bots, botnets. So they are just network of bots and bots are nothing but they are just devices. Your mobile, your laptop, your tab, anything that could be your devices which are under the control of an attacker or a cybersecurity criminal. So botnets are nothing. They are just under the control. What happens that if your system gets infected with a malware, number of time your system becomes the bot which again spreads the malware or maybe is performing some other kind of activity. Again, these things totally depend upon the goal of the malware, what the threat actor was thinking about, what kind of attack it was trying to perform and what kind of services it wanted to disrupt. <clears throat> so it totally depends upon that. The next thing is honeypot. This is very interesting. This is a system that lured the attackers, that attract those cyber criminals into believing that they are vulnerable or they are a compromised machine. So whenever, it's like, uh, whenever the attackers see that, well, this, this looks like a vulnerable server or a vulnerable machine, let's start performing attacks. So when they start performing attacks, uh, the team over there who are actually managing the honeypot and everything, they are taking care of the IPs from where uh, these attacks are getting performed and that is helping them into further processes, either for protecting this organization or for any other reasons. This also helps in understanding how attackers are performing the attacks. Basically, the defenders are trying to understand the mindset of the attackers or of the threat actors behind perform these kinds of attacks, apart from the IPs they are using. Also, it's, this helps in getting information related to potential cyber attacks. If your device is infected with a malware, um, the first thing is that, that malware is trying to enter your system, your network, your organization, again, depending upon the goal of the attack, uh, goal of the attackers. Once they are successful in entering into your system, they start getting executed. Either it may require user intervention or it may not require. So once it gets executed, the next steps are like disrupting your services, disrupting 
the network, performing some other kinds of attacks, creating a connection with the CNC server, uh, listening to the rest of the commands that is coming from the CNC server, using that entire, compromising the entire system and converting it into a bot where the user is unaware of the fact, or it may remain in that system or in that particular network undetected for a longer period of time so that they can perform a larger attack. Entering your network and getting executed are the two common and these happen. These two things will happen for a successful malware attack. The rest of the three points totally depend on the uh, goals or on the goals of the attackers or the threat actors. What are they trying to do? Most of the times the uh, malware try to spread across the network, but a number of times they are not spread and they just remain in one system. It's just a simple phishing kind of attack that was happening maybe. They are not targeting an entire organization. So it totally depends on that. So it may or may not happen. Mass malware attack campaign most of the time shares itself across the network and also connects itself to a CNC server, CNC command and control server, at, which we discussed in the beginning. And they try to be persistent as well. That's it for today's session. We will uh, discuss about the rest of the things in the next video. So please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Cryptoware. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you so much.